Strickland set the break. He continues to punish the rack, making the one side. Well, Aaron Strickland uh, can smell the aroma of victory at this juncture. He's got a 16 game lead with the score at 103 to 87 in a race to 120 over three nights here at the Ridgeways Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. Once again, a terrific safety play. Look at this. He's guy's still playing tremendous pool. And Evan Reyes comes up with one of those few and far between instances where uh, he is given the opportunity to do his thing at the table, but uh, the situations have not been very, very beneficial to uh, Evan. It's a very difficult position to be in because he's eight feet away from the object ball and there's no way to make a, a, a reasonable attempt at an offensive shot. And the defensive shot is very difficult too. Mm -hmm. And time and again, he's been faced with this situation. To Mr. Strickland's credit, he's played magnificently. Yes. Poor Stafford to play offense. There was just nothing else he could do, and it was a very difficult offensive shot. He made a great try at it. Unfortunately, it was a right, maybe a one in five shot at best. Well, as you pointed out, when you're down that much, the uh, alternatives are reduced immensely. And look at the offensive opportunity Earl picks up from mm -hmm. that. Uh, I mean, everything's laying out there beautifully. And and these are situations that he just has not failed on for three days. They've played 190 games. Mm -hmm. and, uh, never dreamed that they'd been this high a standard when I came over here. Totally happy with the cue ball being on the rail. I have to elevate to create a little bit of angle. He hits those shots awfully nicely. That slight elevated cue, he's just an absolute master. Picks up game number 104. Just 16 away from snatching the 100,000 US dollar pot. And, uh, this is the second break of the evening. The score is standing at 104 Strickland, 87 Reyes. He'll be back. match, at which time we will then have a short award ceremony. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are resuming the $100,000 challenge.
better take all nine ball format between Earl Spoon and Efren Bata Reyes. And at this point, Strickland certainly is looking very good. And uh, he has established the biggest advantage in the game, a 17 game difference at 104 to 87. He needs only 16 more games to wind up this affair. He made three balls on the break and has the uh, cue ball in perfect alignment to clear out the rest of them to, to go for his 105th win. Now we see an characteristic error. Well, I think we may see safety here, and I think he's going to play it by stopping the cue ball dead next to the nine and bank the seven to the other end of the table. Which is exactly what he's done. And once again, Effin comes up to the table with a difficult shot facing him. Well, it's not as bad as it could have been. I, I think Earl could have made a little better effort on that safety. And, uh, could have made it closer to the rail? Well, uh, more so uh, further away from the pocket. This is actually unmakeable, although very difficult touch. Well, Effin chose the safety, and I, I'm sure he made the right decision. That's It appears to be a very good shot. I'm sure that Earl has the opportunity to kick and hit this ball. But not much likelihood of making it. into his game. Well, we definitely need to see the momentum shift that this match is going to be extended to the uh, latter stages. And this is where the momentum needs to start, uh, right here at the break. If he can get some balls going in and get a few shots off the break. Start. Yeah, he, he hit a real solid break, and that break uh, offers some hope. Uh, there was uh, some balls that had some pretty good motion, and they went directly into the pockets, and it would uh, appear that if he could continue to hit the balls that solidly, the balls would be willing to go in the pockets for him. I think that would be a problem with them. Uh, I know all the fans are hoping for an extended match here. They want to see it become pretty close. Well, he's working at it. It's 
had a real good chance to pick up his seventh break and run out of the night. Pecking away at that lead. Uh, he's got it down to 15 from uh, 17. 104 89. There's a count. Well, he needs 31 games to win this match. That's about half the number of games that uh, Earl Stewart is looking at. Well. This has been uh, Mr. Reyes' Achilles heel. Yeah. Uh, just the consistency from the break isn't there. And he hit him, frankly, quite well. But uh, just he doesn't have the same volume of power that Cyril Strickland does. And uh, it's not just Efren doesn't have the same power. Virtually nobody has that power. Well, Earl has just managed to capitalize on these... Uh, misfortunes of uh, Efren Reyes and uh, his remarkable play has certainly given him this uh, big edge at this point of the match. Laro's examining where he needs to go for position, and I'm not sure what he has here. Looks like he's got to use a, well, just a stop shot. Six ball must clear the seven. And he had a remarkably nice shot there. Good speed, good volume of spin to avoid bumping the nine ball on the way by. achieve the coveted position. Uh, if you notice these players always like to come off this long rail and then kind of roll into their position. And then if their speed's a little bit errant, they're still able to obtain a good shot. That is the 105th win of Earl Strickland, as opposed to 89 so far, chalked up by Efren Reyes. Strickland, 89 Reyes. Strickland now to break. And you see the volume of power. The one did not go on the side. It was kissed by two balls and and hit the cue ball in such a way that it actually diminished some of the speed off of it and still went in the pocket. got kind of a funny angle. In order to make the three ball, the cue ball comes to the wrong side of the five. So you see they're going to have to bring the cue ball down here and play the five in the side pocket. Or he was going to have to power up on that shot and that made pocketing the ball with power much harder. He chose the safest route to pocket the ball but he still managed to hang it up a little bit. And that's just a sign of fatigue. That's a shot that he just never missed throughout the previous three days of playing. We see him burying his uh, head in his uh, arms on the table, ruining that fact. Oh, 
or when you're a great competitor, no matter what the score is, you like to just get one game better. Yes. If you just get a little measure of uh, success. And sometimes you can build on just one game. with your long experience uh, in this sport, you've seen it happen several times. Oh, yeah. Patrick Reyes gets to 90 games, but still far away from where Errol Strickland is. It is a 15-game advantage for the player from the United States. 105 to 90, this is a race to 120. Situation now. Well, this is an off angle combination shot. I'm, I'm sure we're going to see him play it, but this is an imminently missable shot for most of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty sure he's going to make it, though. <laughs> he made it easy. Brings the cue ball back, positioning the side. Is that a good angle there? Yeah, he has a good angle. He. It's fine. He's just double checking. I think he might have a, maybe not a, quite a full pocket for the five over there, and he's just checking to see where he wants to get the cue ball. If you notice, he's achieved an angle that will naturally allow the cue ball to come back down to this end of the table where the six ball and the seven ball both rest. He'll just go straight. To, well, it looks like he's going to draw, bring it down on this side of the table. Nice control exhibited. Bounces the cue ball off the cushion so that he has the option of going high or low on the cue ball, depending upon the exact shot he needs to play. And he's in real good shape. This is just what the doctor ordered a break and run out for him. Mm -hmm. He really needed this to kind of get a little momentum built. against 105 by Earl Strickland. Shot, he has a chance to uh, score yet another game, although he's going to have to make another good shot. He's elevated, only going to a part of a pocket. And it made it look very routine. Well, Earl 
earlier on, the uh, Philippine uh, Consul General uh, came in to wish uh, Efren Reyes uh, good luck. And maybe that helped uh, inspire Efren to get back into this game. Consul General uh, Strelly Brangel uh, took uh, time out from her hectic schedule to drop by. And Chiwan, the uh, Filipino player, this very late uh, hour, oh. just past midnight. That just goes to show you the volume of support in the Philippines for pool. Oh, yes. Once again, he's got the desired angle. He'd like to think he's try to swoop around the table three cushions and drop off this long rail onto the end rail. Just, uh, we've seen it so many times before. The reason they come to the center of this side cushion is that it totally takes any possibility of scratch out of the play. Even if you miss hit the previous ball, there's enough room for error. So the score now stands at 105.92 in favor of Earl Strickland. But Efren Reyes has chipped at the lead a bit. Now at uh, 13. 13 game uh, difference, down from 15 earlier. Well, there was the wing ball going in. That, that bodes well for the Reyes camp. Efren is definitely uh, breaking a lot better than uh, what we saw him do in the early stages of this match. Yeah, he's getting better results. He's hitting the rack about the same, but the balls somehow have freed up since they last brushed the table. And it seems like they're allowing the uh, little more early break action balls falling in. Well, he's got his work cut out for him here. He's I have to either go three cushions around the table or two rails across the table. He's chosen the three rail shot. Hit it quite nicely. And uh, he made that look a lot easier than what that shot is when you use that volume of speed in English on the ball. It's very easy to miss shooting to only about a half a pocket. He just wants a little bounce off this head rail, just a little bit. It's been a long time since we've seen uh, Efren uh, go at it this way uh, tonight. Well, he's assembling a nice flurry here. This will be his third consecutive break and run out if he manages to place the last two balls in the pocket. so near yet so far away. Well, right now, I don't think he's concerned with Earl Strickland so much as he is. He's just thinking that maybe if he could just get up to 120 games. Or... And this is the, uh, the, the one thing that uh, would possibly uh, cool the other players. Uh, Great playing would be to retaliate, make him sit over there for a little while. And then when he does uh, have to turn the table over, maybe not leave the guy an open shot, force him to get into a little kicking battle. Efren could get into a couple of those and win those. Well, oh. this is just a brutal occurrence for Efren because the balls are all lined with the pockets. Little side note: Four of the last six racks, Efren has broken run out. As we said, that has not occurred too much in the uh, match, especially tonight. Rich. 
Bill Strickland asking for the bridge. Reestablishes rhythm from where he left off. I don't think he's gonna like this shot. It's workable, but it's gonna, he's created quite a bit more work out of it. He's gonna have to use what we call warp drive. This will take a great deal of power. For the power he's got. That was a tremendous shot. It's missed the nine. Oh. It's left there pretty good. Overcut it just air. And uh, despite the fact that this is difficult and an off angle, Efren views it as a free shot, so his attitude is, hey, you know, line it up the best I can and swing right straight through it. If it goes in, it's a bonus. Efren Reyes has now cut the lead down to 11 games at 105 to 94. You will note, ladies and gentlemen, that. Uh, we had a 30 minute break uh, just a few minutes ago and uh, during that time Strickland had a 17 game lead it is now down shot by what a break by that and uh, simply the uh, nine ball even early Strickland uh, gives a round of applause there Well, that was our 200th game. I didn't know you were counting. <laughs> Did you just say that? Ed? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, the difference has been cut down to 10 from 17 at the resumption of this match uh, in our third segment tonight. There's the wing ball flying in, and that uh, that's encouraging. Even though he hasn't come out with a shot, this is, uh, well, maybe it's, it's still encouraging when the wing ball goes in. Then that, I would say that there's still hope here for Efren to knock off this deficit he faces. What does he, what does he have, uh, Mark? Well, it's hard to tell if he can get by the two. The, the one on the eighth ball definitely go. I mean, it would be a makeable shot. He's declared a push. He's going to try to invite his uh, opponent to make the first mistake this rack. He made a nice shot. Um, the idea there was that he wanted to tie the six and the seven up so that that would be something that would have to be dealt with later in the rack. Carl's played a safety, but uh, not a very good safety. Uh, from where he was at, it was probably the best that he could do. But Efren can deal with this in the new one of a number of ways. Uh, I think we'll see a return safety. No, he's lining up the bank. No, he's lining up the safety. This is a good tactical 
over because if Efren could pick up ball in hand, he could then make the one ball by caroming it in off the six ball, and that would free the whole table up once again. Carroll made a nice kick shot. It's so important to make a legal hit, even if you leave your opponent a shot, because you really deny him a lot of times obtaining the perfect angle necessary to get in line and run the rest of the balls out. Well, it's not going to like his result. Again, the finances were cut out for him. He's going to have to kick to hit the two ball, and he's going to he's, he's gonna kick it to a particular side. He's going to try to kick to the high side of the two and give himself a chance to make it directly in or possibly bank it into the nine or the, the object balls there. Instead, he's uh, left it on the rail. And he's, it's actually fairly fortunate. Earl may have a play at the nine ball, but it's going to be a very difficult one. And, I don't think it's going to be one he's going to choose to play. I think what we're going to see is Earl's going to trickle the two ball over by the nine and put the cue ball in the middle of the table. Just in this fashion. And uh, Earl's made a terrific shot. Efren's really going to have to come up with something here to come out of this. Oh. Yeah, he's come up with it. Oh, a tremendous kick. Rolando's grinning now. <laughs> and the entire audience is uh, is pretty entertained by the fact that he's, uh, the soul guy still got this much fight left in him. Well, after Reyes has come up with seven straight wins, seven straight games, after being down by... Uh, 17. He has cut it down to a more manageable 10. But uh, as we pointed out, it's getting very late in the day, and he will have to sustain this onslaught to be able to have a chance at snatching the win away from Earl Strickland. What seems to be the problem here, Mark? Well, everything, actually. You know, he's got a facing a pretty difficult shot on the four, and then the five doesn't appear that it wants to go very easily. He's made a tremendous shot. You see how he had to negotiate around the nine ball mm -hmm. from a long ways away. <coughs> now, the problem is the five ball's makeable, but the six ball might not be. Play position to bank the sex ball, and that's a, a shot selection that I enthusiastically agree with. Where the seven goes, though, that's the part that creates trouble for most of us. Look at this. That control. That control. Well, the crowd here is certainly getting treated to the mastery of uh, Efren Reyes and thoroughly enjoying it. I'm sure our television audience is just as breathless as we are. It appears that Efren's going to have to line up to play a carom from the 8 to the 9 and attempt to win the game on the next shot. I don't think the, the, I don't think the opportunity arises here where he can play a position to make the 8. So he's going to try to get the cue ball back to the center of the table so that he can easily generate momentum on the mass off the eight toward the nine rather than have to manufacture that energy by using backspin. Let's see if I can pull this off. He's very good on these type shots. Oh. Oh. 
Well, um, Efren hasn't been the beneficiary of very much luck tonight. As a witness by us, he's crashed off the end rail and decided one crucial game that was an obscure angle. Earl Strickland easily puts it away to chalk up his 106th game and again post a an 11 game advantage at 106 to 95 getting closer to his objective of picking up win number 120 is 14 games away from that Well, the difficulty with this rack is transitioning from the two to the four. The two goes, but the seven's right next to it, which means the cue ball in order to place the two into the pocket will probably have to bump the seven unless he can get the cue ball way back down the table. And he hit it on the right line, just not quite hard enough. This shot's going to require a massive stroke. He's going to have to hit extreme low on the cue ball, and he wants to bring it back right where his hand's laying now, and then back out off the rail, at least a good foot. He's not going to be able to get ideal position. He's going to get position just to make the four, and then he's going to have to transition the cue ball up and down the table to get back to the five. Oh, he went for the whole ball of wax. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was an unbelievable shot. Shots like that, uh, he deserves to win. Hmm. What would be the strategy here to set him up for the six? No, he's just going to use center ball and slide down the table straight. Appears he's right on the verge of finding that rhythm that he likes to be in. Another tremendous stroke shot. put away for the nine to reestablish a 12 point or a 12 game uh, lead over Efren Reyes at 107 to 95. Looks like he has the rail first shot that he made two of last night. A very difficult shot, but he's been hitting it so well, I'm pretty sure if there's any hope for it to go, that he's going to play for it. He's lined it up and he is going to attack it. Boy, that's remarkable. Three in a row on those.
There's still a little work to be done. He makes these look so routine, but they're not. Uh, he has to negotiate the 6 to the 7 and then the 8 to the 9. He's done a good job to get the proper angle on the 6 ball, so the cue ball naturally comes to this end of the table. Well, right now he's got a lot of room to work with. He's preserved a nice angle here, so the cue ball real freely will go down the table for the 8. And he's back in a good two-stroke rhythm here. And he's feeling very confident. And again, Earl Strickland uh, starts his breakaway, leading by 13 at 108 to 95. Towards the latter part of this match that has stretched out for all of uh, three nights here at uh, Ridgeway's Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. And just so you won't get any ideas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the time at the moment is 1.16 a.m. Sorry to remind you, Mark. <laughs> That's all right. Hong Kong is a night town anyway. Oh, yeah. You know. yeah. That's true. Yeah, especially being treated to first class uh, play, I mean, we really don't feel the time going by. Strickland needs 12 games to uh, free Zephyrin out of the match. The patent is one on the side. Yeah? seems that the power has not diminished. No, not uh, at all. And uh, the one on the side, that's a byproduct of lots of practice on this, uh, every day, daily practice. Does he, uh, does he pay special attention to that uh, strategy at the break? Oh, definitely, yeah. He, I'm sure he spends as much as two hours a day breaking alone, just working on that shot, just like a golfer would in the tee shot. Look at that shot. Tremendous. It's only on the hard shots you need to stand still. Not on the easy ones. It's only kind of like those kind of Not on this television. You can tell fireworks and it wouldn't bother me on this one. Like that, man. I think I'm sure I'm going to throw with that, right? Ah. something about fireworks. I think we're witnessing he that. No, he's uh, he's building up his energy here. This is a. He's the master of speaking the opposite of what he's thinking. Well, you know, he was uh, alluding to our cameraman who's uh, been carrying that camera for the better part of. Uh, Six hours. He was complaining about his not standing still. <laughs> yeah. That's when number 109 for Earl Strickland. That's against 95 for. Efren Reyes. Well, that was his third consecutive break and run out of this little mm -hmm. flurry that he's retaliated against uh, Efren with. And, uh, he only lacks 11 games. If he wins one more, he's uh, he'll be within his well within his range of uh, maybe putting the match away on one inning.
Earl Strickland. 14 game lead. In this race to 120, the score is standing at 109 for Strickland, 95 for Efren Reyes. We might get to see a jump shot here. I'm not sure. No, real first shot. No, Matt shot. Strickland has uh, started with his uh, verbiage again, and uh, I think that might have affected him that time. Yeah, it definitely did. He's feeling tired. He's just trying to energize up. Uh, I've seen this routine a million times. I hope no one takes it too personal. No. To his credit, he, he has produced. Uh, he's complained, but he's produced when he's had the shots, and he... Uh, he doesn't use that as an excuse for missing at all. I think he just uses it as a means of gaining energy. However, I don't think he's consciously aware of it. It's you just know, Mike, in his I, makeup. You know, Mike, I just think you're a super nice guy. <laughs> to be able to uh, uh, rationalize everything that... <laughs> Well, it's not that. No, uh, believe me, I wholeheartedly don't endorse his behavior. But, but nonetheless, the, uh, there's got to be something in the makeup of this guy that makes him do that and yet perform at such a high level. I mean, this, he, he's given a performance level that no one ever has ever achieved over a span of time like this. Reyes with uh, win 96 and Earl Strickland still with a very decisive 13 game advantage in a race to 120 the score stands at 109 109 games for Strickland 96 for Efren Reyes Efren Bata Reyes with a good break there. Just an excellent break. And, uh, well, he's going to have to get around the eight ball to get over in the three. I don't know exactly how he's going to do this. Flying it up. He's going to have to send the cue ball down to the center of the end rail with just a little bit of right-hand spin and pass between the gap that's formed by the three and the eight. Oh, he's using draw. He's going to be able to draw it straight over. Well, he did it the easy way, Ed, and a, a real professional might have tried something a little fancier at this stage. <laughs> Just teasing. Everyone's got a little bit of a bad angle. I think we're going to see him. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. I thought he had to draw it back. He was able to kill it. Just take a little more of an angle on this shot. Well, you know, I guess I've got the impression that a lot of the people here are rooting for Efren at this point, him being the underdog. But uh, I'm not sure it's just that, nor the uh, behavior of uh, Earl Strickland, but uh, I guess his reputation precedes him. Yeah. 
Yeah, the greatness of the Efren Reyes. Everyone likes to see him do well. You know, some questions have been raised about uh, the physical condition that uh, Efren Reyes is in after this long haul. I think uh, Efren should be able to raise uh, those doubts. He may not win the match, but certainly he has shown that he can stand up to the athleticism of Earl Strickland at this juncture. Yeah, um, it's undeniable that we'd like to see him in a little better shape, but uh, mm -hmm. he can play for hours and hours because I've traveled around with him, and he can play maybe as much as 20 hours at a time, mm -hmm. so no problem. He doesn't expend a lot of extra energy. I don't know if you notice, he's very relaxed throughout the entire match. Hey, what's this? Oh, that's a, we haven't seen him break that. No, well. no, I pocketed four balls on the break. Yeah. Is that eight ball uh, on the other end going to be a problem? I don't think so. I think uh, the, the shot to win or lose the matches or rack is going to be the shot right here. If he gets this in, he'll be fine. He coasted it in there nicely. Getting the cue ball now near the eight was uh, quite beneficial because now it's much easier to execute the stroke necessary to get enough energy on the ball or enough spin to bring it back. Oh, he does have to reach quite a long way. Efren Reyes is behind by 12 games. And Gerald Strickland has only 11 more to go to wrap this all up. Uh, Efren is in there. Really, you know, when you talk about this extended match, Efren's hanging right in there as far as the uh, break and runouts go tonight. He's, uh, Strickland's had 14, and Reyes has had 12. Well, I tell you, uh, Mark, uh, no matter which way this game goes, I'm sure the crowd here is getting a real treat from this match. That's undeniable. There's no other two players that could hold the people's focus for this long and maintain their level and the high level of play. The wing ball flew in. That's good news for Efren. Not sure what type of a shot on the four ball he might have here. He's possibly carry him off the one and make the four, but where the one ball goes after that is what separates the greats from the uh, good. The guy that can control the one ball from here is a great player. Huh? Most of the rest of the good players would have trouble. But he made that look quite simple. Now the one ball will go in the side pocket, but he only has a small portion of the side pocket to hit. What a tremendous shot. Yeah, pulls he, had, it off. he had to put some top spin on that ball and uh, hit it fairly hard to just a half a pocket. Made it look very easy. What's he looking at, Norma? He's checking the angle. He's going to have to deal with the nine ball. When I say deal with the nine ball, I mean when he pockets the six, the cue ball's going to definitely hit the nine. So he's checking where he wants to put position the cue ball now so that it goes off the edge of the nine as he would like. 
So he's actually playing position for the seven when he was checking that on the five. Shot, huh? Those shots are easy at this stage of the morning. Thirty-nine <laughs> oh, yeah. games won so far by Efred Reyes. One hundred nine by. Earl Strickland, and we will pause for these words. Part of the champion, I think that's what everyone's uh, feeling good about. They're really admiring him. So. Fighting power. Oh, yeah. Well, despite the fact that uh, Evan has a pretty stoic personality, you know that the flame burns in his heart. Oh, a tremendous break. He's going to have to come up with a one real tough shot for sure, and that being the opening shot in the three ball. Well, evidently, Everton is uh, getting more success from uh, the break than what he had previously and uh, that has certainly gotten his game going at a point where uh, most uh, people I guess would have given up the cause most people would have stayed in to, to give up the cause <laughs> Play a straightaway safety. And it wasn't a bad idea because the offense wasn't really there for the shot, but it hasn't turned out as, as anticipated. And Earl comes to the table with some type of a shot. It looks like a thin cut across the end rail. He uses to play it. And not an easy thin cut. He, he slightly overcut it. He missed it on the pro side, as we say. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Well, that hurt. He wanted him to come off the rail as far as he anticipated or hoped. Try to go rail first on this four ball. But even if he makes it, the position angle of the line is not there. He's going to have to. Like the cue ball will come off the four, and it'll be three rails. That's going to hit the side cushion very high, and it would be hard to get a cut shot on the five. And hitting it hard is not an option. Hard enough to see where he's put his tip, is that's about where the cue ball will hit the rail. Well, hitting it hard was an option. I think he hit a shot. Wow. Listen to this crowd. That's a great shot. A great shot. Can't help thinking, Mark, uh, even if the uh, lead is still a wide 10 game difference, uh, Evan must be putting some pressure on uh, Earl at this point. Well, especially being that we have some fatigue in here and uh, the crowd seems to be helping uh, getting there for the momentum going. And, and Efren clearly is playing pretty well still. Uh, both players are a little bit fatigued, but both of them are still maintaining a pretty high level of play.
FM that breaks out in a wide grin. Well, that was because he took the nine ball. And it was purely unintentional. Yeah. Most often when you do that, it costs you something, and he knew he got away with a little something there. Deservedly so. I think the ability to look at things and laugh a little bit in a stressful situation really helps to uh, to free all that pent up energy that uh, Effort gets to 100 games and narrows the gap to 9 at 109 to 100. You know, did he break and run out that way? I think he might have. I'm trying to Maybe. think. Let's see, how did he get started? No, it was all about the nice thin cut shot. Oh, yes, yeah. Score at 109 for Strickland, 100 for Efren Reyes. Rate 220. I do Make a ball on the break every time. Yeah. <laughs> we played 200 games and he finally. <laughs> found out. Just when he needed to. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got warmed up. Yeah. This guy made a diesel engine or something? <laughs> yeah. Nine game difference. And yeah. you, you, you hit around the head when you said, Earl, I have to feel some pressure around this because, uh, well, it's still a significant lead. Uh, the momentum is gone right now. And, uh, Earl's missed a couple balls. But he has to be satisfied with the amount of his lead. Oh, yeah. Definitely shaking his head. Uh, well, it's a difficult position play. He's got kind of a funny angle here. He's trying to determine whether he wants to take the chance to try to follow all the way down or stop out in the middle of the table and cut it and come down. He's decided to follow all the way down. That was a great shot. Absolutely perfect. Generally, when the cue ball's on the rail, it wouldn't be perfect. But uh, he's got enough room to work with here where this will be fine. And, and wrong. Uh, he came up to Efren just when Efren was about to make the shot. Yeah. yeah. Great shot. Great shot. Great chat. That's win 101 for Efred. And the lead is down to eight at 109 to 101 in the race to 120. Well, that was really uncalled for. Uh, uh, Strickland should never come out on the floor during the course of a rack. fast approaching two o'clock in the morning and uh, well most people I guess didn't think it would last this long especially after 
uh, Ronald Strickland opened up a 17 game advantage. That's true. Earl's a great fighter. Or Efren's a great fighter. He's getting a lot of luck here, too. He's getting some shots off the break. And mega balls on the break. Made three balls in that particular break. He couldn't even make one uh, about two or three hours ago. He's hitting the same that they... Uh, the table sometimes it gives and sometimes it takes away. Very difficult attempt here. <laughs> what a shot. What a shot. Andrew Strickland gives a nod of appreciation to Efren. Oh, what a great shot. <laughs> if Hefner can somehow pull off this rack, he will have clipped off 10 games from Earl's 17 game lead. That's quite an achievement in and of itself. I tell you, my God. Uh during that last break we had, a uh, 30-minute break. No one has, had, uh, in, in this uh, hall had given uh, Evan a chance to get back. And get this close. Well, including myself, I was guilty of that. Uh... Well, he's my countryman, and I'll have to uh, ask for an apology to Evan. now turned into a seven game affair. Look at that break. Dead center on the center of the table. He's picked up a shot in the two. Once again, not an easy shot at all. Making the ball's not a problem, but obtaining position on the other side of the table when you have such a flat angle, this requires a master's touch because you have to shoot hard. You're going down the rail that cuts the pocket in half. And Efren uh, takes a little time to collect his thoughts, and you probably even have to apply some side spin. And yeah, it's a wonderful execution. Well, the game, ladies and gentlemen, is down to a seven-game difference, 109 to 102. shot playing the cue ball off the impeding object ball. Seems like the uh, wake up call came. <laughs> this is pretty good. Down this to a six game affair, 109 to 103. Efren's run out three consecutive racks now. Thank you. 
Everton Reyes just won the uh, last eight games to cut the lead of Earl Strickland down to six in a very crucial segment of this match. I think it's uh, pretty much solved the uh, problem of the break. Uh, it's going it's well. Yeah, it's going well now. Uh, I want to tell you, it's kind of interesting when you think of Everton started the night seven games down. Mm -hmm. He now only trails by six, and that's after suffering a terrible barrage that struck up one of them through the first two segments tonight. It's like a masterful safety. It certainly is. that that Earl said? Uh, Earl said that Efren didn't have much to worry about because uh, he couldn't probably even pull the stick back now in <laughs> reference to the fact that uh, Efren's uh, sat him down here for quite a few games in a row. How many breaks in the row? Well, three consecutive, but he had three consecutive right before that. He won a game in between. Efren picks up ball in hand here and definitely picks up the pace. That's Well, Earl Strickland is asking Efren if he was glad and again. No, no, he's talking to the guy in the crowd. Oh, okay. <laughs> Once again, we're reaching the point in the match where uh, composure has become a problem now. We've been at this point three or four times throughout the uh, last three days, and there's been times when I really thought that there could be a uh, catastrophe. What sort of a catastrophe was that? Well, when you have a big ego and things don't go your way, you have to find an excuse. Otherwise, you'd have to absorb all the punishment yourself. So, when we start looking for excuses or problems, or sometimes when we're nervous, we create problems so that we have an excuse. Was that vague enough for you? <laughs> I'm dreamt I'm swimming. <laughs> it's late, Mark. Yes, he did get the shot he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it wasn't the shot he wanted, but he took it anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do we have a situation here, Mark, or what? We certainly do. That's four breaking run outs in a row. And the lead is down to five at 109 to 104. Mr. Strickland needs 16 games before, or Mr. Reyes needs 16 games before Mr. Strickland gets 11 games. And suffice it to say, we have a match. We certainly do. It's funny how these things come down like this. I, I, I said yesterday that I thought it could very well end up being pretty close at the end of this and uh, honestly going into this last segment I did not feel that way anymore but, uh, this happens more often than you would believe 
Catherine's got me wondering. He's been getting that one ball into that side pocket as uncannily as uh, Burl was uh, since the start of this uh, match. Well, I'm going to tell you, a match of this length um, will get you tuned up on those things because you, you know, now at this point he's broke 104 times, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's going to improve as time goes by as well. He becomes more practiced and more well versed in how the table plays. And you're right, he is getting that color. It's uh, going better. But uh, he feels he's got a situation here. Well, he wants to make the most of this, and he doesn't want to have another uh, unforced turnover or, or careless turnover because there's going to be enough times where he has to go and gamble and kick him more anyway. Play the bank shot with a safety. You notice the speed that he used, and uh, Earl comes to the table. He's going to have an opportunity to play offense here, huh? A very slim one. He's going to have to kick the two ball into the nine. And maybe he can go straight at the two ball. He can go straight at the two ball. I not doubt about uh, There's a pretty good chance he can make the nine. The carom shot, but he's not even looking at that. I'm not sure what he's playing on there. Why am I not surprised that uh, Earl is uh, going about his usual business of uh, verbalizing again? Well, he's struggling right now. He's trying to pick up some energy, I guess. Well, he played a safe, and it looks to be an effective safety. Mm -hmm. stands at 109 for Strickland, 104 for Efren Reyes, and they raised to 120. At the end of 213 games, we stand five games apart. Yeah. Up for grabs, ladies and gentlemen, it's 100,000 US dollars. Winner take all. We're going to see a full mass A here. <laughs> Almost Tremendous right. attempt. This should be an easy win for Earl at the stage. I will need ten more wins. Never will need sixteen. Well, Earl Strickland was nailed down to one hundred nine games for the past uh, ten racks. And uh, Right now, he again puts up a uh, six-game lead at 110 to 104.
couldn't figure out the difference from 110 and 104. Yeah. You can see where the cue ball ended up, which should indicate he didn't hit him the square lays. He was hitting him when the one was going inside. He had two balls in, but... Uh, he really hasn't missed hit the break very often. I can only think of a couple times. Mm -hmm. Called the push and... Does Heffern have a shot here? Yeah, he's got a real good chance to play safe. Heffern's an expert at moving that cue ball off the one down here behind the five ball. For me, it seemed awful risky because the one's going to hit the three, and I wouldn't have good control. But, oh, he had a combination. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start asking you, Ed. <laughs> I tell you, uh, Mark, those rabbits have been popping up. I guess they've been pretty busy. Well, Mateus, um, for Strickland to push out to a shot that was that makeable was just a careless error. Uh, and that's the reason that I didn't even count that as a possibility. I assumed that it was off. I'm, uh, well, sure. well, he made a nice carom shot. Again, after Andrea slices the lead down to five at 110-105. Here we see the replay. He's really playing very well, and he's getting some uh, opportunities that uh, had eluded him throughout the first few segments. That's true. Just on everybody had given up his cause for lost. And Reyes comes up with these remarkable recoveries. Look how solid he's hitting that rack. Yeah. Five ball ended up in just a terrible place for him, and the two ball is no cupcake. Is the cue ball a problem? Yeah, cue ball is a problem, but uh, primarily because of the location of the two. <coughs> Yeah, great shot. Great shot. Yeah, he's going to have to come up with yet another great shot. Mm -hmm. And the five balls, that's bad too. Even if it makes this get perfect on that. Well, he made it look easy. <laughs> Ah, it's still tough. He's got to go down the table. He'd have rather had just a little more angle where he could have popped over, but he's going to have to follow ahead some. Looks like he's queuing up to it pretty firm. Nice shot. Yeah, he was a little shorter where he wanted to be. The ball will go, but the positions now become uh, a little tougher. How does this look to you, Mark? <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Looks difficult. It is. This is just straight, pure pocketing power. This has nothing to do with playing the perfect shape or anything. He has to be a shot maker through these. Now he's got to that ideal position where he can come around two cushions and hit this long side rail and then just drop off this side rail. And forever after, he's coming in the ideal position zone. Look out, Earl, he's coming at you. Uh, that now exceeds the best run out of the day mm -hmm. uh, right there. That would have to be it, especially when everybody's fatigued and uh, 
tremendous fun out. Just a four game difference now between Earl Strickland and Efren Reyes. There's the nine. Oh, oh. It is now down to a three-game affair at 110-107. Remember that Earl Strickland, very late in this match, had established a 17-game advantage. And would it be fair to say that it's now anybody's ball game, Mark? Oh, uh, uh, it's almost an even ball game. Has the one on the side. He's going to pick up a shot on the two here, too. He has a shot, but the eight ball is going to create a problem for transitioning from the two to the three. The man is on, ladies and gentlemen. Ref Andreas digging himself out of a hole. Although he's been confronted with a lot of bewildering situations. Yeah, he faced a lot of adversity. He was on the, the short end of the luck earlier, and uh, and that's shifted back around now. For many of us onlookers, we were afraid it was too late. I took a gamble to win the game, and uh, what a shot! What a great, great shot! On the five ball, this object ball is right. Close to the rail, is that going to present a problem? For yeah, you? the five to the six is a problem for sure because the nine forces you to get pretty straight in on the six, which means getting an easy shot on the seven won't be probably uh, readily available. He's got some work to do here. I'm not saying it's unavailable, but he may end up having to roll the seven length of the table, which, yeah, he's pretty straight. He's pretty straight. He's got just a smidgen off the rail that he can work with, but he he hates to have to force this ball. If you look, it's uh, pretty straight in there. Each ball's only a, oh, eight or three eighths of an inch off the rail. To hit that with power, then graze the rail going in is the only way you can create an angle, which certainly rather not have to, to go through that. On the other hand, the uh, converse is he's gonna have to roll the seven ball either into the side or the long corner. problem when you asked me if there's a problem this was it. Great shot. Takes care Great of that shot. Yeah. Uh, he had nice speed. He's still got another tough shot to go. In fact there's gonna be two more tough shots. He made the most out of it. You could see the speed he used was warp drive. Now he's got one final tough shot. He stayed down real good. His body stayed down that yeah. time real clean. Efren Reyes now only trails by two games at 110 to 108 after falling behind by 17 late in this match. Can we call that a recovery? He's <laughs> brought me back around here. I was in a funk there for a while. But...
this is the biggest string for any player where there was so one-sided where there was really uh, mm -hmm. he's made a ball he's going to be rewarded with a shot on the one ball here for all the work he's put into some of these previous racks and look at the two nine possibility makes you wonder mike um why couldn't he do this before uh, he just didn't get the opportunities. Uh, the one, the break wasn't working anywhere near as well. I mean, the bulk of these games that he's won in a row, look at how many of them he has off the break. He's, he's only won two without off the break. <laughs> Three. Now, the, the two and the nine do not lay nicely for a combination shot, and that makes this uh, task quite a bit more formidable. This is going to be a great shot. I don't think he's going to get perfect position out of it, but he's going to have a readily make, uh, he can make a safety here by stopping the cue ball, banking the cue two ball out of their two cushions. And that's going to be a pretty effective safety. He's got the two ball on the rail near the side pocket and that's the deprive Earl even if Earl hits it that's not likely that he'll be able to make anything. You leave him out in the open or near a pocket then the likelihood of him kicking or getting uh, a ball in or, or making a safety is greatly enhanced. Oh what a shot by Earl Strickland. He's got another tough one to make here. All right. Another tremendous shot. the comeback that we've had here no. an hour and a half ago. I'll tell you, uh, Mark, I've been asking everybody around during the last break, and uh, nobody gave uh, <laughs> much of a chance to come back, but he's done that. Now, Earl Strickland, however, wins the game, and uh, have I got this correct, 111-108? Uh, yep. A three game lead by Earl Strickland. Strickland. Strickland mm -hmm. on the side. I'm not sure if Pearl can make the two or he'll have to play safe. Looks like he might be playing safe. And he was. And he did. Flawlessly. Oh yes, good safety shot there by Earl. Hey, you have to commend him. Uh, he's still fighting just as hard and making the most of every single shot. Make the nine even. Well, oh. oh. yeah. steady scratches. 
Definitely have a couple more than his share of those tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Strickland comes back with a real nice shot the proper angle on this ball. What happened there? Well, he was shooting to a half a pocket and just a little bit of fatigue and I thought I saw his body flinch just a hair like I described with that from now. What happens when you when you move your body, you're not confident. And, uh, and this comes with fatigue and confidence is a fleeting thing. You lose a little confidence or, or if you just have a little errant thought go through your mind at the end, like don't hit this too thick. And sure enough, you hit it too thick. Could it be said that uh, he's suffering from what Effin had earlier, inactivity? A little bit of that as well, uh, coupled with the, the time. And, and you know, uh, everybody misses, you know, I mean, uh, that was by no means easy. We just get so spoiled and everything looks like it's just supposed to go right in all yeah. the time. These guys are greatly defying the odds of even great players. Well, not ideal. Eckman's gonna have to make another tough, tough shot. He's taking a toll on the player, but Eckman's been coming through with these awful good. And you can tell the pace of the game has slowed down some. Get his say, body still. Would you say the uh, slow pace might favor Efren? Oh, More definitely. Than, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was one of the uh, keys to winning this match for Efren was that he needed to control the pace. And, mm -hmm. and for real, he needed to play this fast tempo. Mm -hmm. down to two again at 111 to 109. Remember, folks, this is a race to 120. Over three nights here at the Ridge Race Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. Well, Efren hasn't been this close since the uh, first opening night, I believe, when he trailed by three games at the end of the first series. So he definitely has to feel like he's in the thick of this match. Whichever player wins this ultimately will be very deserving. And really, oh, yes. uh, it's a shame that somebody has to lose this match for the, how well the boys have played. Well, I think you hit it on the head, though, so, uh, Mark, when you said that at the start of this tournament that no one's, nobody's going to be a loser here. Certainly not one of these two players. Oh, a great shot there. I had to bring the cue ball around three cushions. And... Uh, to get the cue ball where he got it, he had to load it up with left hand spin. And it was another one of those shots that you had to aim away from the ball and hope to deflect it back to the exact right spot. And it's all judgment. of the, the night, uh, the people here at Ridgeways are frozen in their seats. Well, I haven't even become energized here. I'm kind of nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shot. The blast I hit at that angle at this late hour. <laughs> I 
just terrific pool. them lay down. He's going to draw to within one game of tying yes. Carlos Strickland. What a match. Oh yes. 111 to 110, ladies and gentlemen. Three Remember the shirt in the side pocket they just replayed it. Remember folks that during the last break, Earl Strickland had a 17 game advantage that has been sliced down to only one by Efren Reyes at this point. Of the last 13 games that Efren has won, 10 of them have been off the break. 10 of them without Earl even shooting. That's incredible at this juncture of the tournament. Well, he made a good break. He wasn't wildly rewarded. But he'll have first play at this rack, and that is a valuable asset. shot and, uh, he's gonna have to make yet another one well, given Earl's personality uh, Mike uh, how would you think w what would be going in in uh, Earl's mind at this point I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not feeling too good no. We have a, a quote from our interview earlier that I conducted with him, and uh, though it was brief, he, he, he stated in there that when the matches are close, Efren generally wins them, and and then he trailed off saying, I don't care. Wow, tremendous shot. He's made three tremendous shots. This requires so much energy. Here comes another yeah. one. And now he's back to where it's just a matter of just basic focus. He doesn't have to do anything fancy. The other three shots require a lot of energy because they were uh, blasting balls in the half pockets, essentially. Do you have a record, uh, Mark, of when we last had a tied match? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I certainly do. Well, we are that now, tied at 111. <laughs> I just can't find an adjective uh, to describe this uh, comeback of uh, no. Efren Reyes. Oh, well, Remarkable, uh, seems so tame. It, if you look at the amount of break and runouts we have here, uh, 11 to 14 games that he's broken and run out. It's absolutely incredible. We are tied at 111 all. decision to make here. The offensive shot is not very palatable. The defensive shot is ultra difficult. 
think he's going to take on a safety. He's going to try to shoot the two ball between the six and the eight. Bank it down the table and put the cue ball down below the four. <laughs> he's executed it flawlessly. Look at this shot. It takes a lot of energy to hit that, uh, controlling both balls on the table. And uh, I was forced to kick. Look at this. Oh, Efren's rewarded for a great safety that he played. Well, Earl uh, went straight up and uh, made the stroke. Uh, yeah, was he, that he was. No, he's uh, sometimes when he's. Uh, what do we call that? What do we call it? Uh, he's a little frustrated. And I, I think he just didn't feel like wasting a lot of energy analyzing and just get it over with. And. And rightly so. There was nothing more to do there, and, and he knew he was going to hit it. It was just, there was no sense spending any more time over it. There was nothing that he could do to make a better play at it. Effort fell a little short of the mark, and now he's going to have to muscle up. And uh, this adds quite a bit of difficulty to the shot. The speed looks pretty good. Great shot, great shot. It staggered just a little bit, but this late hour, believe me, you gotta be hitting pretty good for them to go. Where does this guy get the energy from? That's absolutely. Don't ask me, sir. Crowd's gonna go wild there. Alfred Reyes takes the lead at 112, 111. A race to 120. And this was a game that was set up by Efren's break as well. I don't know if you remember, but it was a safety off the break. I and mean, uh, Earl had to just come up and, and kick at it. Do you remember that situation how we were talking about? Earl was getting some of those earlier, even though it wasn't a break and run out. It was established because he got ball in on the break and made the tough shot, okay. tough safety, and then Earl kicked and hit it and left it for a shot, and he ran out again. Efren Reyes after a very long time is in the lead. Got the momentum. Huh? Oh, yes. I think he really feels like he's in command. He's moving a lot freer around the table. And got a little spring in the step. to make uh, work uh, during that last break that we had uh, about two hours ago. Some people were telling me that uh, Efren looked like a beaten man, and I tended to believe them. I would concur, yeah. I would concur. I definitely did. Well, you don't get to be the great champion that he is and have any quit in you at all. And I've seen him come back from a lot of deficits before. To include tonight when we came in here and he was trailing seven games, I still felt like he had a real live chance to win this match. But when he fell back by 17 at such a late point. I, uh, uh, yeah, I was uh, convinced then that the only thing that he could do, uh, well, uh, we, t we talked about it earlier. Uh, the balls weren't going down on the break, and that was the only way he was going to have any chance at all to get back into this match. And after 200 games, I, I had no reason to believe that by 220 they would be, you know. Here he's breaking and running out again, it looks like. Look at his speed control, perfect. Now with a two-game lead 
at 113 to 111. Seven games away from wrapping this up. But of course, we cannot count uh, Earl Strickland out because oh, no. at this point, uh, everything is up in the air, I guess. Well, I, I think the host feels like he's getting his money's worth here as well. Hey, look at the grin on his face. I don't think he could be any happier, happier with the way this is going. Just won't go. I can't tell what kind of a shot Earl has here. I don't know if he has a real good shot or maybe he's hooked. I don't know. He may have to push out. I know just how Earl feels that you sit there and you, you endure a barrage like this, and then it's your turn, you don't have a shot. <laughs> you know, but Jeff no, Heffern has been faced with that kind of oh, situation. He's all faced adversity. All yeah, that absolutely. Match long. That's absolutely correct. Now, even though uh, Heffern may not be able to shoot directly at the one ball, these are the type of situations that favor his style of play, where he can kick to the rail, feather the one ball down to the table, and get safe. He's been trying to bring the cue ball back between the four or six and move the, cue, the one ball slightly closer to the pocket. Take a break. Take a break. Yeah. on tape because this is just going to be unbelievable oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he had a shot there. It's going to be all right. Will the number two pose a problem here? Yeah. Nope. Oh. No, it looks like it goes there. Transitioning from the three to the four, it looks like it can be a little bit tricky, depending upon what he can do with the two ball here. from where he was at, he just didn't get the perfect line. There's a couple of shots that lay here that none of them are easy. You could try to play the four ball into the rail and then the back of the four and then in the pocket off the five. That was the shot I was describing, and he did it particularly well. I don't know what time he hasn't come out with much luck here. Yeah. He's got another real tough situation. He's going to have to hit the fine edge of the five ball and turn the cue ball loose, and that makes this shot extra difficult. You don't know where the cue ball is going to end up. So he's hit it like a champion. And he certainly deserves a reward for well, that shot. He has certainly responded to every situation that has uh, come up in the uh, last few games. At lunch today, uh, Efren was telling me that uh, a protracted battle would favor him. Uh, some people were doubting that uh, statement because of, oh! Hey, he's miscued, and that's a, do you know that's the first miscue we've had this entire event?
Alfred Reyes has a two game lead at 113-111. And it has happened at that point where every shot counts. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. Looks like you're shooting a bowling ball at a thimble mm -hmm. after you're sitting there for so long. <laughs> And Efren Reyes now with a one game lead, 113, 112. We'll be back. Strickland set to break the balls. He made a ball and he's in this shot. A couple of them, as a matter of fact. Uh, and now the two and the three have lodged up into the pocket here where Earl's going to have some kind of work to do. He's terribly disappointed about this. That's not he should. Well, what a great try. What a great try. Well, these uh, players have just been coming up with shots that uh, boggles the imagination. Yeah, it certainly is the case. I don't think Earl's going to like the outcome of that shot. Not at all. That's a try to half pocket slide it on the rail and bank shot. That was a all or nothing. Earl's going to get a uh, golden opportunity. Get back in control. Still has the edge at 113-112. But whatever the outcome of this uh, match, Mark, the big story is going to be how Everton was able to come back from 17 games down, leading the match. Oh. Uh -huh. Unbelievable what he's accomplished. But he's looking good. He's feeling good. Well, this will be the magic act of all time. And you know. I sort of saw a, a look of fatigue in, in uh, Everett's uh, countenance about an hour or two ago. Uh -huh. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, weight of what's going on has got me feeling like I'm just sitting here. Hey? I know. Okay, the score is now 114 to 112. Reyes is set to break, and his break has been working unbelievably good. And look at this. He's going to pick up a roll. He's going to pick up a roll, and much to the crowd's delight. Yes. And this has been a Attracted a uh, bit of bad luck for Earl. Well, I tell you, Efren has had his share of that. Oh, definitely. For yeah. most of this match. Probably for most of the last two days. Mm -hmm.
spectacular cut shot, and I think he's going to be rewarded with some type of a shot at the nine ball here. I'm pretty sure that's what he was playing for. He's going to make a play for him? Well, he's a little off angle. He may choose the, uh, a, a different option. He may choose the safety. He chose the safety. When he played the ball on the side, though, he was hoping to get up a little bit back uh, for a better shot at the nine. They had laid a little better, I'm sure he would have shot at it. Strickland was going to attempt a jump shot, a mass A shot. And he made a great shot. He's going to kick from the long rail, and uh, he's for sure going to hit it. It's just a question of whether he gets lucky enough to make it. Well, not too lucky. Oh, Earl comes up with a marker. You tried. Strickland is behind by two games, 114 to 112. A situation that uh, I feel he's not used to as far as this match is concerned. Well, you're exactly right, and believe me, that weighs in. That's uh, unfamiliar ground. And you remember how earlier in the match where we were saying that uh, when you're trailing these shots are a lot harder. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make it look like it's uh, any difficult than a practice uh, run at this juncture. On his way to cutting the lead down to only one. Earl Strickland trails 113-114 in a race to 120. Well, what Strickland needs to do is reestablish some momentum here, and uh, this is the best spot for him to do it, and it's in the breaking. Now the cue ball got away from him a little bit. He's made three balls again. The same scenario that we've seen time and again. He's real effective on that. Well, that particular department of his game hasn't gotten away from him. Probably seeing who the better pressure player is at this point. This is still plenty challenging. Yeah, he's got a tough old road to hoe here. He's shooting to a blind pocket. Staying down real good on the balls. Do you notice that, Ed? Since he's made his comeback, his body's been completely still through those shots. Earlier, he was kind of fidgeting around just a little bit and was caught to me. And what 
We're seeing just pure tenacity. There's a, both these players are just standing toe to toe, playing top caliber pool. This guy just doesn't give up. Abron Reyes up again by two at 115, 113. Reyes just needs five more games. And Strickland just needs seven, and both mm -hmm. well within either one of their uh, possibilities of uh, being able to knock that many games off in one visit to the table. That's the one on the side. Bit of body English. Yeah, he was hoping for some sort of a shot there. Now he's got a little problem here because the five and the six look like they're laying over by the rail pretty close to the pocket. And if he tries to roll out, push out, take a foul to the other end of the table, that represents a pretty big lucrative looking target for the cue ball to glance off the two and carry him into the six and make the five. You want to run that by me again? Okay, uh, the, the six and the five uh, uh, look to be aligned with the pocket. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to take a foul, he nearly has to push out to somewhere where he can hit the two ball, and the most likely place would be to the other end of the table. Mm -hmm. Because of the six and the five are there, that makes it awfully difficult because it'd be a, a, a lucrative looking target for Earl to shoot at. See, he's just, he's, he's put a real intelligent shot here. What he's done is gone ahead and made a mess of the 5-6 so that that will have to be dealt with no matter what. Oh. And even if he turns the table over, it's not likely it's going to be an easy round for Earl. Oh, tremendous shot. Tremendous shot. Sorry, a legal shot. Does Earl have a shot here? Well, he, yeah, I'm sure he does. He can at least go rail first and hit it. And that was a very difficult shot to make as an offensive shot, but he could hit it. Now, Efren does have a pretty good offensive shot. Efren's kind of weighing up the 5-6. Uh, I'll have to do something with him with the four ball. That would be the ball he'll choose to. To either move the cue ball into him or possibly play the four off the edge of the five. But I don't think he's going to do that because the five's frozen to the cushion and the likelihood of a double kiss is a much larger one than that five. Otherwise, I think we would see him play it that way. He already knows what he wants to do. Oh, he certainly has to show that uh, determination and decisiveness. He's going to follow to the end rail and come back into the five and the six. Oh. Oh. He's going to shoot softly. He's not going to dislodge the five for sure. He may give a ball in hand, but he... Uh... What will happen if he does? What will happen is if uh, Efren does give a ball in hand, Strickland will play uh, yet again another safety. Oh, great safety. Oh, no, no foul. No foul. No foul. Well, we can always go to the videotape if that's uh, yeah. Good job. 
turn of events here. Now we're in the tactics here with this game. situation and uh, he's weighing going up and down the table or across the table. He's kind of thinking of kicking over here by where he's queuing at. And there is a possibility of making the six that way, but it's also much harder to make the head if he goes a long way. Or maybe you can see the edge of the five. Looks like he's queuing up like he maybe can. He's motioning like he'd like to bank the five over to the seven ball, over to the cue ball on the end rail. Now this is a delicate shot because he's gonna have to graze so lightly on the five ball. That's a spectacular execution. Just spectacular. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. Great hit. Great. That was a very difficult ball to hit. situation to deal with. Reverend well, showing uh, again one of those rare moments of uh, emotion that he allows the public to see. Yeah, this is tough. He's going to have to play, take on the offensive shot, I think. Oh, he played the combination. <laughs> It's just a massive shot. That was a massive shot that he just played. I'll tell you, Mark, I'm just overwhelmed by uh, what's happening here. And uh, you'll have to forgive me if I turn into a spectator here. Yeah, I, I have on a couple of occasions caught myself sitting here with my mouth agape and uh, just enjoying the proceedings. I, I think it's senseless to try to edit this. I think we need to keep it all intact, <laughs> the entirety. This particular stretch has really been one big lesson. Well, he's got an awful straight. He's got a big problem. He's got a big problem. Yeah. He's got the stroke that can get him out of this jam, but boy, he's going to have to really do something here. Incredible shot. Incredible shot. Oh. Again, he makes it look all so simple. And that nine ball was by no means easy. That was a tough shot after all those other tough ones. 
Everett Reyes now with a three game lead at 116 to 113. Let me off a while, okay? Yeah. They've now played 129 racks, and there's only three games separating these great champions. This is set to break. Stop the cue ball dead center of the table. He's been rewarded handsomely. Reyes has a, a pretty good layout of the balls there. After that last rack, uh, anything's possible for this one. I think that there's a fair chance he's going to go ahead and clear up the table. Now from this position, it looks like he may have to clip the nine just slightly. He was able to avoid the nine. That certainly makes his task a lot easier. He's obtained an ideal angle on the six ball to transition from the six to the seven. He's definitely picking up momentum as we go. Perfect shot. Perfect alignment. Reyes is yet again broken around the entire table. Yet another. Okay. Uh, Reyes is just unbelievable here. Just when everybody had uh, given him up for lost, Efren Reyes goes about uh, his way and uh, stupefies. Uh, Everyone. Well, he's uh, assembled a, a barrage of break and run outs, uh, which is normally Earl Strickland's game, and uh, this has been the run of the tournament. He needs three games, and Strickland now needs seven games to defeat him. Oh. He's got that one ball going on the side. Just a hair short here, and he's gonna have to really dig down, make a nice thin cut shot. No problem there. He made it look easy, but there was plenty of challenge to it. I still think of dealing with the six ball. The six ball won't be easy to negotiate either. <sighs> The combination will be a possibility. It's just that when there's that much distance between the two balls, if you don't obtain a perfectly straight in line to hit that, the shot becomes infinitely more difficult. And so consequently, players primarily, uh, good ones, don't play for combinations of this, this type. This would be a big rack. If you could somehow find a way to get this six out of the way. Uh, the 
path that Efren's thinking of taking is he would like to land the cue ball on the side pocket side, the far side pocket side, and use spin. But it's very iffy because uh, of what the cue ball will do if it caroms into the seven, nine, or six. And it's uh, at best about a 50-50 proposition that he's faced with here. And no matter how good your control, you're still subject a little bit to the whim of the table. Now it looks like he's using some left English to try to take that out of there. And it was an intelligent decision. What does that do now? Well, um, I think there's a possibility that he could play the six all the way in the corner and billiard at the nine, trying to make the nine ball here with a carom shot. This is going to be a big turnover for Earl. Oh, yes. Reverend Reyes with a four game lead at 117, 113. But uh, Earl Strickland is uh, presented with a golden opportunity here. on this shot. He's done so. Strickland needs six games to win this match. Efren Reyes needs three, but Earl Strickland will come up to the break. Well, that's well within Earl's capability of running six racks here. Oh, we've seen that. Yes, time and again, he's had many flurries in this thing, and the, the way it's shaping up now, Ed, I would venture to say that we're gonna have a 119-119. <laughs> Certainly wouldn't be surprised to see that. Side. And he hasn't been very fortunate here in the last hour and a half of getting mm -hmm. the shot. Well, I look for Efren to pass this shot back to him. This has uh, little or no hope of being a killer safety. Such a difficult shot. Earl's attitude is such he may not spend much time lining up. It looks kind of like he's in the mode to just go ahead and flail and take a chance. He's kind of irritated the fact that he hasn't been getting much for for good offensive opportunities off the break. Efren hates to do that because then he subjects himself to just wide open luck and uh, Earl's in the mindset where he's just going to slam it in, I think. Mm. And I think that's what he's thinking. But I still think it's going to be the right play if he does it. Uh, I'd like to thin the one ball over there and bring the cue ball behind the seven. So an awful lot can go wrong with the shot. Well, no, he wasn't playing that. Uh, he wasn't playing that. And you can see where the position of the one ball is, or the cue ball is, see? He, he made the safety that he wanted to make. But, uh, fortunately, he inadvertently knocked in the eight. And now Efren's uh, taking a couple of deep breaths here, and I'm sure Nerves has got to play a big part in this, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. both players have to be pretty damn nervous right now. Well, 
considering the way I feel, I can't imagine what, what, what is going on in uh, the player's uh, inner systems at this juncture. He's got a mass save for a safety here. He's hit a, just a spectacular, just spectacular shot. He hit the proper side of the one. And even though uh, Earl's going to have a play to come back at him, that wasn't bad. He was hooked behind the seven, so. And really, I can say that that was maybe the only time in the entire match that I disagreed with Evan Reyes' shot selection. I think he should have passed the roll out back. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that, uh, didn't he? Well, he didn't want to subject himself to Earl getting up there and just firing at the balls mm -hmm. and messing them up and maybe slop something in. And because uh, Earl is clearly, uh, he's very irritated and uh, impatient. He hasn't really had much of a shot for almost two hours now. Look at this safety. What a shot. I think you'll see what I mean. He's not going to spend much time. He's just going to go ahead and pop at it now. He's in that mode where... And he you know, called it. Look at this, the nine ball. And players are definitely dangerous when they're in that mode. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, like a wounded elephant, you know, uh, type thing. Especially a guy with uh, the firepower that Earl Strickland has. Came very near to making the nine. It looks like Efren's going to try to take on the one and the nine here. Or for sure the nine. Got it. Well, bad luck scratch. Followed it in. And this is a big turnover, a big turn of events here. That was a real nice shot. Uh, even though he had ball in hand, they get the cue ball to maneuver like that. That was. He's still honed into this match. for the position. Carl Strickland admonishes the crowd for applauding. He says, don't cheer for me. But, uh, well, he wins the game and uh, He's down by only two now at 115, 117. Race to 120. And, you know, you Earl's. just might be accurate about uh, your the prediction 19. about 119 <laughs> off. I would made mention of that earlier in the week. I don't think uh, on the air, but. I'd hate to do it, but I might just give you a kiss. <laughs> Earl Strickland needs five games. Efren Reyes needs three. <laughs> well, Earl's got the lucky roll here. He didn't make a ball. <laughs> and the four and the two are virtual cinches. And this is going to force Efren into a uh, tactical situation that not going to be easy to handle. He's going to almost certainly have to roll out. And he's almost going to certainly have to disturb the 2-3 alignment when he rolls out to attempt to de deprive Earl of the possibility of a nice little uh, three-ball combination check.
Well, the two ball must not go that readily, or he probably wouldn't push out like this. speeches that Earl gave between racks. I think that was a, a motivational thing. I think he was building up some extra energy here trying to, I don't think he had a, I don't think he even knows the words he chose. I think he was just saying it and thinking about what he's going to do with his next opportunity at the table. Well, he made the two ball. Huh? That was what I was afraid of after he might give up. Earl's kind of it was a real difficult uh, ball pocketing shot. He absolutely couldn't have hit it any more purely than what he just did. Yeah. So, yeah, just, yeah. This late hour, they still have command over the uh, accuracy of your cue like that. Is what makes him Earl Strickland. Negotiated this run out quite freely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not showing any signs of nerves. Well, if you guys are looking for drama, you've come to the right place. Just a one game lead now for Efren Reyes, 117 to 116. In a race to 120 over two ni three nights of competition here at the Ridgeways Bar and Restaurant in Hong Kong. Ed Bick's on here for Vintage Sports together with Mark Wilson. And uh, we're way past 3 o'clock in the morning, but everyone is wide awake. Oh, yeah. It's positively unbelievable, and uh, at the end of 100. 233 games, we can't find any kind of a decisive winner. Maybe we should extend the format. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> you must be kidding. <laughs> By the way, these two guys are playing, they could uh, play all night. Well, it appears that it's going to be tied up after this uh, rack. Seventeen all in a race to one twenty. all in the race to 120 between 
Earl Strickland of the United States and Efren Reyes of the Philippines. Strickland at the break and the cue ball flies off the table. Well, that wasn't very fortunate for Earl. Huh? That was a bad time to lose his focus on the break. It's, but you play this long and you're bound to have times when that occurs. And Efren certainly scratched on the break a few times as well. When you play this volume of games, the luck has a chance to balance out pretty good. And uh, well, for such a long time, everyone was uh, waiting for that to happen. And it seems that uh, everything is uh, evened out. We are in the closing stages of this match. Yeah, for the longest time, it seemed like he, really, he was never going to get a chance to uh, really exert himself. He was going to have to always fight from deep down in the hole. Made a nice shot there. Had just enough speed that he wouldn't scratch. Three balls is nearly identical to what Strickland had last break. Now well, we got a problem, maybe. It's negotiable. He's going to hit slightly downward on the cue ball. We no longer have any problems. Yeah. <laughs> that has just been adequately addressed by Efren Reyes, who now takes another one game lead and two games away from snatching the 100,000 US dollar pot from Earl Strickland. The score 118 Efren Reyes, 117 Earl Strickland. <laughs> The fans all have big grins on their face. If you look around, they're just so happy to see this match come down like this. And no one expected it to end up not being a decisive victory for one player or the other. result in a loss of game. A very foolish thing to do at this juncture of the match. Well, in that interview, oh. you are... Uh, oh, ever miss with ball in hand. Oh. That interview you made with Arvo Strickland earlier, he's had people who care, and uh, is he just uh, trying to live up to that statement? No, uh, no, no, this man has some problems. Or if he doesn't, then the whole world does, uh, however you want to look at it. That's his viewpoint anyway. Now yeah. oh, we're getting some turnovers here. It's really a shame to, to see the uh, 
attitude dictate the quality of play deteriorate at this stage of the game? That's, uh, it certainly leaves a bad taste in the mouth, Marco. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Well, he may be out of his control. The one uh, made a terrific shot. Really, to this point, uh, well, even now, the, there's never been a match played at this high of a uh, pace or level or this many games. Have anything happen to that between now and the conclusion is just a terrible shame. Mm -hmm. There really won't be a loser here tonight. Now the only problem here is Everett doesn't want to have to play a combination. He's uh confronted with a situation where he nearly has to go for the combination. He will try to get the cue ball near the rail on the opposite side of the side pocket from where the cue ball rests now. Oh, he's going into the ball. He's going to break him out. And that was a pretty dicey maneuver. Now he's going to have to use a big stroke to get over on the opposite side of the table because he's so straight in. Well, he's not going to quite get there. He, uh, he's clearly feeling the heat of the moment. He's made it. He's made it. Yes. <laughs> Neffern will be the first to reach 119. Mm -hmm. Two-game lead and just one game to go for Edward Reyes in a tremendous comeback in this game. Well, he really had to use some determination to get out that rack, and uh, I guess you see why he's the master. He he broke those balls out when uh, he wouldn't have had to do that, mm -hmm. but he knew the probabilities of him getting proper position for the combination and making it versus the. The, uh, going the way they did and he knew there was some risk in both and he chose the one that was the best option and that's a case where uh, although I told you earlier I second guessed his opinion on a shot for sure he did the right for sure he did the right shot find the mark here. Uh -huh. It appears that he's uh Arnold's gone in to give up stroke. He's absolutely gone in to give up stroke. Yeah. This is ludicrous. He's gonna scratch on this shot and uh justify what's 
Yeah. Even though he made those two balls, neither one of those was the proper way to play it. And uh, he was just, uh, he's absolutely given up. His only way to win there was if the pull downs would have just dipped down and give it to him because uh, he was in no mind frame. To well, the crowd here certainly turned against uh, Earl Strickland. Well, I don't think that's really, I don't look at it that way. I think he's turned them against him. Huh? Yeah. As Earl Strickland said in that interview you conducted with him earlier, he doesn't care. Oh no, he cares. I have to disagree. He wouldn't go through all this tirade and he wouldn't wait till he got to 170. <laughs> no, no. He cares very dearly. He cares too much. Earl Strickland had a 17 game lead right after a 30 minute break where most of the people here just didn't give everybody a chance to come back. I'm absolutely uh, out of words. After it, Reyes wins it. He wins it. And I'm not going to say anything else, Mike. Alfred Reyes has just said it all for us. We'll have the awarding ceremony in just a short while. What an exciting match. I think everybody here had uh, all their money's worth tonight. And uh, let's have one more round of applause for both great players. Effort has said he's lucky. <laughs> well, we have concluded the play. And I will attempt to be brief in closing with some recognition and thank yous. I know everybody here is a little bit tired. The first and most important people to mention, interesting, interestingly enough, happens to be each and every one of you. As spectators, you have been generous with your interest patience and cooperation, and I sincerely appreciate your company throughout this whole weekend. This morning, and this was a long time ago, 6 a.m., I woke up with the cable news network, CNN, playing highlights from last night's action here at Ridgeways in Hong Kong, and I was just uh, captivated. This is shown every half hour throughout the United States and the whole world as well. And everybody in the whole United States has their eye on this place for this match. I am overwhelmed with the results and professionalism our marketing team from API Prism has produced. And a specific thanks to Mark for making my role easier and fun. Next, our television people from Vintage Sports in the Philippines. You guys deserve a statue or a memorial for tackling the logistical nightmare of a short notice at an unknown site. You guys produced outstanding footage without complaint of our limitations. It is your can-do attitude that compels me to express my love for your enthusiasm. You. 
and a special mention to host commentator Ed Pingso, smoothing out my mistakes and making me look as professional as he is. The staff here at Ridgeways deserves some notice, including the cooks. It's always first class here, and thank you for your tireless effort. The referees, uh, oh yeah, yeah, let's have some applause for the, for sure. The referees and scorekeepers have the most stressful and thankless tasks. Both head referee Neil and head statistician Ollie have worked countless hours behind the scenes. Thank you guys. Next, I would like to thank the terrific models here to add style and credibility to this event. You are not only beautiful, but intelligent. And that fact is important when you are surrounded by billiard players. As a fan of pool, this match has been too good to be true. We have all won here this evening. Thanks to this man's selfless interest in promoting the greatest pool match ever. He has assured his place in pool history thanks to his commitment to making pool a sport spectacle. On behalf of the billiard world, and especially myself, I would like to thank very much Mr. Bob Moore. In just a moment, we'll let Bob have a word with you. But there's somebody else that's very important. Bob's lovely wife, Joanne. Yeah. She has faithfully support, supported and sacrificed for his endeavors. And I thank you, Joanne. Well, this brings us back to where our attention has been over the last three nights, the players. Both have delivered performances befitting the glamorous setting and verbal superlatives we have given them. For our first champion and runner-up tonight, Earl Strickland, yes, you can play. Congratulations. For winner of the $100,000 prize and the title of the greatest nine ball player on earth, Efren Reyes, you truly define champion. Yeah. Congratulations, my friend. And now let's uh, have Bob come up and uh, have a word, maybe. Hand out some money. Well, I'm renowned for short speeches, actually. <laughs> um, I think uh, Mark said it all, really. Um, who would have envisaged such a result, uh, such an, an ending, such a, such a comeback? Um, this was done for Paul. I mean, that might sound a cliche, but uh, both players won tonight. Uh, both held their heads high. Um, before the match, I did state that I would be holding almost certainly another event well I can state that I almost certainly will not and that is because a match of century is a match of century uh, let's give another round of applause for the players they made this possible well I guess it's time to present the check we want Bob up here right Bob, I know we wanted you for some pictures. Get Bob up here for some pictures.
moving along that way, but rather nasty light in the back. Thank you very much. That's the first thing. Okay, can we have four left and next door to one another, please? Thank you. Okay, and can you tip it forward a little bit? That's good. All right. Okay, here we go. Big smiles. This way, please. Mm -hmm. Thanks again to everyone for uh, making this a special weekend for me. Okay, I'm trying to say a word. Hmm? Maybe we can just get one word with Efren here. I'm sure that won't be much more than that. I would like to thank you all of the one watching us. And uh, of course, the one who putting uh, on this event, and of course, our sponsor, Jose Pompit Puyat. Thank you very much. All right. Well done. We'll see everybody in March at the World Cup. Yes. Let's party.